One Nation's Malcolm Roberts. Good morning to you, Malcolm. Good morning, Marcus. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, mate. Where about to you? I'm in Brisbane. Brisbane ah, City, half uh, your doing month. remote parliament from my parliament from my electorate office. Yes, of course, uh, it's so remotely. Yeah, well, yeah. I bet it is. I bet it's frustrating because, of course, you can't leave there because if you go to the ACT, what happens? I have to lock down. I have to quarantine for two weeks when I come back. But, but first, Marcus, I want to express my condolences for your recent loss of your. Oh, dad. thank you, mate. Thank you. It's very. I, I know he's important to you. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah what, what do you appreciate most about him? Oh, what do I appreciate most? Oh, mate, have you got all day? Everything. Yeah, I have. Uh, I, <laughs> I wish I did. I uh, Look, uh, my father was a compassionate man. He was very, very kind to everybody. Uh, I can't recall a time where he had a, a bad word really to say about it. And he went through some uh, some uh, difficult times in his life, but he was all always optimistic. Uh, but more importantly, I think uh, Dad taught me to... Uh, respect people, and uh, and that's hopefully what I do. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> you know, I do a radio show, so quite often I go off the rails with some of my criticism, but I, I never try to make it personal. So, look, that's the main thing. Uh, my dad was a, a truly decent man, and uh, I hope that um, I'm also, uh, you know, as decent as he is. There well, we that's, go. That's, that's a wonderful compliment. And, and yeah. uh, what do they say? The fruit doesn't fall far from the tree? <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> that's it, mate. That's it. All right. What are we discussing this morning with you? Uh, vaccine passports. Here in New South Wales, uh, the Premier yesterday basically said that, look, if you are fully vaccinated, uh, you can return to a normal life as of October 17, 18. Um, so she's well and truly dangling that vaccine passport carrot. You know, Marcus, that really undermines people's faith in the vaccine, because if you have to be coerced into uh, getting a vaccine because you might miss out on going to the supermarket, you can't eat, you lose your livelihood, um, you lose basic uh, services that you've paid for in in your form of taxation, um, then it really raises people's questions about this vaccine. And so they should, because, you know, I've I've checked with the uh, chief medical officer in federal parliament and... um, they won't say that the vaccine's 100% safe. They admit that they don't know the dosage. They don't know the frequency of injections. They, don't, they admit that it won't stop people getting the virus. They admit that it won't stop the spread of virus. And the efficacy is plumbing, it's plummeting. It's, it's down around 17% of what it, what it uh, should be. So why would you get one of these things? Plus, this is the first time in history that our government has injected something uh, into healthy people that can possibly kill them. And we know there are deaths. So, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And the, and the governments themselves are undermining any faith in the vaccines by the actions they are doing to, to try and force people to get it. And that's what the truckies are on about. You know, I appreciated your call on Monday. We yeah. were just leaving the, the truckies blockade mm-hmm. in southern Queensland. And uh, the truckies just have very simple needs. They just wanted three things. They wanted choice on vaccine, whether or not you get it, that's your choice. Sure. They wanted to end these capricious lockdowns, with the, which are destroying their livelihoods. These truckies have got to pay off trucks, you know. They, they, they don't just get JobKeeper. Uh, and then the third thing they want is their kids back at school. I mean, this is just disgraceful what's going on. All right. Well, look, uh, everybody has a right uh, to free speech and to protest in this country. Uh, And look, I'm glad, though, that uh, once obviously the point was made, I'm glad that you and Pauline um, moved them on the way you did and uh, cleared the roadway for other drivers, um, because obviously... Uh, the point had been made. There was some traffic delays, but uh, I'm not a truck driver. I've been very lucky. That's why I try and have a, a bit of an open mind here. I've been extremely lucky. I've been able to work and earn, a, obviously, an income throughout this whole pandemic. So it's a little unfair on me to jump up and down about people concerned about their rights and their right to earn an income, etc. I'd be a hypocrite, to be perfectly honest. I, I don't agree with some of the, the silly protests that have gone on. But I, I kind of understand it. Well, you know, the, these truckies, um, just first, two, two points. Firstly, uh, Pauline and I didn't move them on. Um, oh, OK. Very, very strong supporters of, of the truckies. Uh, I'll come back to that in a minute. But what Pauline said to the truckies yeah. was um, there are horses stuck in traffic, and, and this was kilometres long, you know, uh, and yes. you're not just going to move it by moving aside a truck. You've got to end the blockade. So All Pauline right. just said, there, we know that you've made your point. 
You've shown that trucks are essential. Mm. You, you've All made right. your point. You've got the media in terms of um, not being forced to get these jabs injections. Uh, there are horses stuck in this traffic, so it's up to you. You know, she didn't say, yeah. she has got no power to move anyone on, but she, she just interceded like that and just and the truckies, being highly responsible just said, yeah, okay, we've made our point and then they opened up. All right. but the other thing is that truckies, um, a very good friend of mine re- reminded me of something. Mm. Trucks touch every single thing in our lives. Oh, of course. You know, they, 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 they transport food to processing. They transport the processed food, the manufactured goods. And, and mate, truckies are so down to earth. They're responsible for what they're doing. They're responsible for other people's lives. They've also generally, many of them are small business owners, so they have that responsibility as well. Some of them mm. employ people. But truckies are down to earth, and they were asking basic questions about freedoms, basic questions. Do they have the right to, to determine what comes into their body? You know, I'll make a statement. Parliaments are meant to serve Australians and not control Australians. We've lost the fact that parliaments serve Australians. Parliaments look after the two major parties and that's it. I would far rather have truckies in parliament All because right. they are salt of the earth people. They can represent the people. These guys are salt of the earth and I highly respect them. The Queensland Premier is copying it again uh, in the press and understandably so. I mean, I have my personal story on this and uh, I won't, you know, I've already... Yeah, said I what that. I have to I say. That. But uh, Little Memphis, there's a, a little boy who's age three. He's stuck in New South Wales at his grandparents' home near Griffith due to the border blockade of the Premier of Queensland, Anastasia Palaszczuk. This little three-year-old has not seen his mum and dad going on now more than two months. The Queensland government has refused a reunion exemption... Uh, look, if, the, if that's not compassionate grounds to reunite a three-year-old child with his parents, then I don't know what the hell is. Marcus, you are absolutely correct. This, it's not the Premier. She's, she's a dope. It's the Labor state <laughs> machine. What okay. they have done is instilled, uh, instilled fear up here and abused powers, and they've done it to keep control of people and done it for their own election, electoral benefit, and they rely on emotion. There are many, many stories like Little Memphis. Of course. But, I, but listen to some of these figures. In, in Victoria, these are just some of the figures. I'll go through New South Wales as well. Every week, more than 340 teenagers suffering mental health emergencies admitted to hospitals in Victoria, 162% increase. Every week, 156 teenagers rush to hospital for attempting suicide or self-harm. 37 Every week, needing emergency treatment or surgery, an 88% increase, almost doubled. A 90% increase in children with eating disorders. New South Wales, daily, more than 40 children and teenagers rush to hospital for self-harm. That's up up, up 31%. Acute mental health admissions for children and young people, up almost half, almost 50%. Gold Coast Hospital here in Queensland, a 212% spike in eating disorders from 2019 compared to 2020. All right. um, and, and Queensland's Butterfly Foundation says calls for help increased 34% for eating disorders from January 2020 to January 2021. 85% were first-time callers for the helpline. In August, the Lifeline Suicide Prevention Line had its busiest days in its 50 yeah, years history. Yeah, we spoke to John Brodkin about disgraceful. that. Graceful, because Marcus, kids are going through the formative period of their mind. Their, their, their mind is actually forming, and and they need the love and nurturing around. Now we've got the, the premier in Victoria saying they can't go to their grandparents and get a, a kiss and a hug. I mean, this is insane. These kids. These kids are vulnerable and underdeveloped. Their brains are vulnerable and underdeveloped. And it's inhuman to expect children to process and cope with the restrictions that adults impose. All right. even, even many adults themselves are now appearing to be on the edge of insanity. And we're depriving kids of the greatest deprivations. Deprivation of liberty, deprivation of education, deprivation of normal development, deprivation of swings, slippery slides and rides on the bike, swims at the, at the beach and local sport, deprivation of crucial friendship supports and separated parents. Well, no, you know, the answer of to all of this, the answer to all of this is they damn well should have been Olympians or NRL players. Malcolm, I've got to go. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Bye, mate. See you later. Malcolm Roberts, there he is, always passionate, isn't he? What?